Okay, hello, welcome to another episode of Cooper's Corner. This week I thought we'd talk about what we could do in SOAR. Um, I've just got our reading groups going and we did it last year, we really liked it. There's a little bit, if you sort of divide the prep equally, it makes, it becomes kind of self-running. So I highly, highly recommend it. Okay, so first thing that has to be done, um, and again, hopefully you have an amazing resource teacher like I do, like I did last year. If you have them on board, it makes life way easier. Uh, Lindsay started by, she used the Fontes and Pinnell to uh, do the reading assessments on all the kids. Once we had their levels, we were able to make groups. So I grouped the kids and I'm not using their real names. I can show you what it looks like. I've drawn a picture, if you can see that Mr. Lauser here, basically, We've split the kids into like 11 groups. So maybe blue group, the kids are all the same level. Green group, they're all the same level. This is, their names are posted like this on the wall in Mr. Briscoe's room. So what happens is once they're, we put them into groups with kids at about the same level. I did take a moment during class on Friday to kind of model it for the students. Um, but then we just jumped right in today. So over here, and this is where again, it's nice to have a resource teacher that is on board. Ms. McKenzie has gone ahead and grabbed a whole stack of the Fontes and Pinnell level reading according to the groups. You'll notice she's put little uh, colored post-its, so this will be the blue group, confusing because it's a red thing, but it's a blue group. So my job is in Mr. Briscoe's room. I have, and if, I know it's a little weird doing it on here, but I have these little round buttons. So Ms. Cooper is working with the blue group today. Ms. M is working with the red group and Ms. W is working with the periwinkle group. Again, the colors are all associated with the reading level, but it, the kids don't really know. Something I told the kids, um, and I said it in a really positive way, my goal is for all students to be successful. Uh, I wish that all students could read with an adult every day. We don't have enough adults to do that. Uh, for that reason, I'm sorry, but you will not all get to read as often as others. I'm keeping in mind those students who need even more time with an adult, and I'm prioritizing those. So you'll notice in this little picture, how I've set it up is today is Tuesday, and because of we're sharing Miss McKenzie with uh, Cam's class, we're doing SOAR on Tuesday and Thursday, and uh, flock on Monday and Wednesday, but that's beside the point. So today, I met with the blue group. On Thursday, I'll move my little button down, I'll meet with the green group. Next Tuesday, I'll meet with the blue group. Next Thursday, I'll meet with the green group. So these groups are meeting at least once a week with the adult. Whereas these students or these groups don't get to meet as often. If I have a Trinity Western student or of extra TOC or an extra adult in the room, I will throw one of these groups with them as well so they get more frequent reading but I'm using all the adults I can. So what does it look like? So when I realize, okay, blue, red, and periwinkle are reading, my job, I go over here to where Ms. McKenzie has very kindly piled all the books. I take the three I need. I put them at the beginning of the day in my for today slot. And then a couple minutes before the bell is gonna go for sore, even though that's posted in Mr. Briscoe's room, the kids will not know which groups are reading. So I have my list of groups here and I will read out their names. Periwinkle, blue, and red. As the year goes on, they know what color they are and it makes it a little easier. But to start, it was a little bit frantic today getting the kids, okay, you're in here. I'm gonna show you how it looks and then we're gonna go over to Mr. Briscoe and he's gonna explain, but what about the other 40 kids? So don't worry about that, it's coming. So I'm going to imagine, and what I usually do is I had Miss W sit here. We put some chairs around. I sat at the back, and Miss McKenzie sat over there. But if I assume this is my little table, I'm going to imagine these are all students. Each group we made about five kids in a group. Just going to grab one of these at random. You can obviously do a guided reading group however you want. Um, I read a yellow book. If you want to go deep, this book here, is it? Uh, was given to me a couple years ago, uh, Jan Richardson, it's amazing. It was a little overwhelming. And in reality, I find in that flock time, or sore, sore time, sorry, I don't have enough time to get into that. Um, I did copy 
These are some of her quick ideas. I did copy these, but we found last year there wasn't really a lot of time to do these things anyway. But this is something if you're interested in like going a little deeper and wanting to go ask more questions, you could use one of these quick ones. Um, something I like to have the kids do, because some will finish a little early. I'll grab some whiteboard pens and I'll say, okay guys, this is what it's like. I'm imagining the kids are all here. Hi everyone, welcome to the group. Let's, I'll hand out the books. So here's one for you, for you, you, you. Let's start by looking at the title page and the title. The Story of Chocolate by Julie Winterbottom. Even just based on that first image, do we think this is a fiction or a nonfiction and why? I think it's a nonfiction because it's a photo. Yeah, I think so too. Let's look through. Oh yeah, so I'm looking. Can someone remind me what that what that's called? Or they might, you know, the table of contents we've discussed is a nonfiction text feature. What other nonfiction text features can you find? Oh, we see more photos. We see captions. We see labeled diagrams. So I wonder, does anyone remember what that thing is in the back of the book they sometimes have? A glossary? Yes, it's a glossary. I look. Oh, that's weird. This book actually, the back of the book is like upside down. It's a different story. So I don't think they have one of those there. They have another table of contents. Isn't that interesting? Awesome, a little bit of chat. Because it's a nonfiction book, I'm gonna have you write down key words as you're reading, if you don't mind. If it was a fiction, I'd ask them to just jot down what happened at the beginning, middle, and end. That way it gives them something to do after we're, they're finished reading because they're all reading at different times. Some people prefer to do a round robin. Um, I've been told the research suggests it's better to let the kids read at their own pace quietly and then I jump to them and listen to a paragraph. So what I mean is, okay, everyone start reading silently at your own pace. I'm gonna come listen to you. I'm gonna start by sitting next to this imaginary child. Okay, imaginary child, will you go ahead and start reading quietly wherever you are? This one's probably the beginning. They're reading. I'm working, this is my chance to work one-on-one -on -one with a kid, which doesn't happen very often in a small environment. So I'm talking about like decoding. Let's look at how we uh, break apart the words, sounding them out. Do you know what that word means? Um, maybe we could use tracking with our finger. Let's stop at the periods, take a breath. Really working on that decoding skills that I don't have time to address individually in class. Maybe I've read a paragraph with them, maybe a couple. Awesome. Keep reading by yourself silently. I'll come back around later. They keep reading. I jump to the next one. I'm sitting on another chair. I don't know wherever they are. They're here. Wherever you are, buddy, will you just start reading? So they've been reading. They're on this page. Okay, bud, uh, can you go ahead and pick up wherever you are? I'm listening, we're talking, we're looking at the text features, I'm asking questions to see, are they understanding the reading? Those kind of things. I continue this. Maybe some kids finish. If they finish, remember to be looking for keywords. Go back through. I probably get around the group two or three times, depending on how long I listen. Okay, looks like we're all done. Uh, let's share our keywords. Oh yeah, awesome. Let's ask some questions about the story. Who likes chocolate? Who likes, oh, the story of vanilla. What did you think? Anything to engage them. It's really not a long time, maybe 15 minutes by the time they get settled. Okay, so that's what's happened here. Perfect, clean up, and then I'll see a different group next day. But what happens to the other kids? Can you pause the filming, Mr. So here we are with Mr. Briscoe. I, like this morning, I only had 15 kids in my room in reading groups. What about the other 40? So the other kids come here, um, and what I do is I, I, it takes a lot of, at the beginning, I think, teaching them what the expectation is because it's a, it's a lot of students, but they all come in. I ask them all to find a seat. So what that means is, if you can see my room, um, they're not sitting just at their original seat. They have to make it work. So like you can see that table over here. There's kids sitting on both sides of the table. Sometimes they'll just sit in a chair like this um, and have like a hard service to work on. Um, but the idea is they're sitting somewhere where they're not going to be distracted by other people because they essentially have 15, 15 minutes. minutes if we're lucky to work. Um, so um, I say, don't sit next to someone you're gonna to talk to. If you do, I will move you immediately. There is no second chance because there's no time. Um, what they work on is they work on a math 
um, skills program that I have. I use tech, but you could easily use just sheets, right? So they're working on basic fact practice. Right now they're on addition, they can do multiple, it works up to subtraction, multiplication. Um, they're working on that. Nothing they need help with. Nothing they too need many help with because there would, like, it, the program that they use answers it for them if they get it wrong. If you, otherwise you would, I guess, have an answer sheet if you use paper, but it could easily be done. Then I have them look at the clock. So I say, you're gonna do this for 10 minutes. So whatever they start, they do it for 10 minutes. Then after that, I encourage them to either silent read or I have a, a set of different puzzles at the back that I just keep changing out, like be it a word search, be it a crossword, be it a Sudoku, a Rebus puzzle, something that's keeping their brain active, working on some fundamental skills, um, but not wasting the time. And then we do that till the bell and then they go off to recess. Awesome, thank yeah. you, Mr. Briscoe. So we did this last year. We found it worked really well. It was nice to have that reading group time, that sort of really close one with a few other people that we don't otherwise get. Um, and once the system, like the process gets going, it becomes easier and easier. My resource teacher does a little bit. I do a little bit, but it's pretty self-serving. It just keeps going. Thank you.